<laughs> and then on um, May 14th, um, it's a benefit for Ethos Music Center, and um, boy, we're doing everything. We're gonna have um, uh, making of uh, uh, instruments um, sponsored by Scrap with reused materials. Um, we'll have concerts by the Portland Symphonic Girls Choir by jazz singer Tasha Miller, um, uh, by a, a chamber music trio, and what else are we doing? There's so much more going on that day. Um, uh, opportunities to write about music and share your writing, so it's kind of this combination of books and music, and it's um, free and open to the public, and we hope families especially come, so it's really for, for kids, too. Um, so, I guess I'll take questions. Anybody have any questions? Yes, dear? How they play piano? Maybe David can answer that question. <laughs> How do you learn to play piano like that, David? Uh, you, have to, you can start very young. Take, do you take piano lessons? Do you? Have you how long have you taken piano? Three weeks. For three weeks? I thought she said three years. I was like, wow. <laughs> oh, three months? Okay. But when, uh, just keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up. Don't give up. Ray Mozart never gave up. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about your research? Yeah. Oh, well, so the letters that David read are, um, were really the resource for the book. Um, there are two volumes of the Wolfgang family letters, and I read through all of <coughs> Volumes. And anytime there was a mention of Marianna Mozart or Nanarol, I Xeroxed it until I had a little pile of every letter that mentioned her or that was written to her or that not very many that she wrote were saved, but things that mentioned her were, um, some of which you heard in the program. And then I almost gave up on the project because I had heard that there were two biographies of her and they were in German. And I thought, I can't really write a nonfiction book about her without reading those biographies, and I didn't speak German. Um, so I applied for an Oregon Literary Fellowship, and I got it, and it was $500, which wasn't anywhere near enough money to translate one or two biographies. <laughs> but it was enough for me to get uh, English to, Ger I mean, German to English software, and I discovered that one of the biographers was alive, and that she spoke English. And so I called her, and uh, she emailed me her whole book in Word, and I ran it through the software. And I, you could get maybe, I don't know, less than half of it. But it was enough to kind of get the gist of a chapter. And then I interviewed her by phone, you know, with questions. And so it was really the primary source material plus interviewing the biographer. And that's the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What happened to your Nobody knows. I mean, there, at the time, there wasn't any reason to save her letters or her music. You know, uh, Wolfgang Mozart was all the rage. You know, she stopped touring when she was 18, and she lived till she was 78. So that was 60 years, you know, where she went on and was in St. Gilgen for a long time. And she was not really on anyone's radar screen. And um, so her letters and her compositions have been lost. Although it's interesting that there are some of Wolfgang's in her handwriting. Just like his first, um, the first symphony is actually in her, the whole thing is in her handwriting. Yes. What got you interested in writing this book? You know, uh, there was an anniversary, it's like the 250th anniversary of his birth or his death was like in 2004 or 2005. And I read a teeny little newspaper article that mentioned that he had a sister who toured with him, who was a musician who toured with him through Europe. And I thought, I have never heard that he had a sister and certainly not a musical sister. And so that's when I started digging. I looked on websites. I got the, the, um, the letters and started reading about it. And the more I read, the more I thought that her story needs to be told. I mean, for, for two reasons. One, to illuminate part of Wolfgang's life that nobody knows about. I mean, how could this musician who's so famous and everybody knows so much about him not know this story? 
And then the second part of it, which is her story is incredible in its own right. I mean, she was also a musical genius. And it was so interesting to think about what her life would have been like if she was born today. Other questions? Well, thank you for coming. And um, I'll be out in the lobby signing books if you're interested. And I think, I'll see. Yeah, we're going to just do a we're quick gonna, drawing. Izzy, will you come draw? This is a drawing. For those in here? Do other people want to enter before we draw? No? Okay. You can get a card. Natalie Swope. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, David. Oh. Oh. Oh.